I was recently messaging with a like-hearted friend about being criticized for our work. We had both found ourselves warding off a growing number of side eyes, which fascinatingly corresponded with a deepening of personal and professional authenticity. It seemed as though the deeper we had dug within ourselves to craft genuine bodies of work, complete with the unique translation that only we can offer the world, the more we had suffered from unfollows, unsubscribes, and unwarranted critique. In response to my miniature text rant, he generously offered, Keep doing what feels best for you. Whether they like it or not is out of your control. Complete with a smiley emoji for solidarity. But alas, his well-intentioned words didn't quell my discombobulation. As I pondered why his objectively valid suggestion didn't soothe my frazzled soul, I had a breakthrough. I responded, It's so hard being a perfectionist who's doing something provocative. As a lover of contradictions, I was shook that I'd never deduced this about my own personality before. This has been a constant source of friction within my own psyche. The conflicting desire to be both feather-ruffling and palatable. On one hand, I am a full-blown contrarian. I don't like prescribed paths, seem incapable of following directions, and don't think the status quo is particularly interesting. I am quick to lend a dissenting opinion, find conformity to be offensive, collaborate only when forced, and I'm usually off in a corner doing my own thing. But on the other hand, I am a raging perfectionist. I set tremendously high goals, expect flawless execution from myself and others, and think hell is being seen as stupid. I don't like to upset people, nor do I like when people disapprove of me, and find the line, I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed, to be Satan-speak. Taken together, I am, what I shall henceforth call myself, a provocative perfectionist. As a provocative perfectionist, I display a combination of what psychologists would consider low to moderate agreeability and high achievement orientation. And this presents a hell of a contradiction for my life and work. First, let's poke at the provocative part, low to moderate agreeability, also referred to as disagreeability. While very low agreeability is problematic among the sociopaths of the world, those of us who fall on the low to moderate end of the spectrum tend to be highly creative and entrepreneurial. In fact, entrepreneurs have significantly lower agreeability scores than controls, as they have self-selected into a career in which they make their own rules. People with low to moderate agreeability are willing to break from the status quo, take credit for their own work, don't allow themselves to be taken advantage of, are pragmatic and strategic thinkers, may come across as blunt or insensitive, are competitive, sometimes to the point of aggressive, don't sacrifice their needs for the needs of others, and strive to pay their own path, even if it may seem selfish. Now, let's turn our sights to the perfectionist part, high achievement orientation, also referred to as achievement motivation. An essential personality trait in any success story, achievement orientation refers to the drive to master challenges, achieve excellence, and be seen by others as a success. When embodied to an extreme, high achievement orientation is linked in an utterly predictable fashion to workaholism and perfectionism. People with high achievement orientation are highly responsive to praise and approval, want to do a good job, want others to perceive them as capable and intelligent, set high personal and professional standards, strive to master tasks, avoid performing worse than they previously had, seek to demonstrate their competence as superior to others, and want to avoid looking incompetent or worse than others. 
As you can see, there is a fundamental problem for us provocative perfectionists. We are wired to poke the bear and want it to snuggle us. In one breath, we engage in behaviors that suggest, I don't give a bleep. But in the next breath, we wonder why others don't give a bleep. We break the rules and then wonder why no one's telling us we did a good job. We act like we don't need others to succeed and then freak when the support isn't rolling in. We disrupt others' work and then panic when someone disapproves of our work. As I was reflecting on how pervasive this phenomenon has been in my own life, I was struck both by how unflattering it seems and how common it must be. When you think about it, some combination of low to moderate agreeability combined with high achievement orientation is required to be successful in our hyper-competitive world. We can't be nicey-nice pushovers who want things to stay the way they are, because that's not innovative, nor can we be impervious to others' thoughts or approval, because that's not leadership. This leaves us on a precarious tightrope between being a prickly scorpion and an attention-craving Labrador retriever. And for many of us, myself included, both of those characterizations can feel simultaneously authentic for us. We, in a very genuine way, want to both resist and be loved. We want to pave our own paths while being accepted by the herd. I found myself wondering, who are some of the notable individuals who embody the provocative perfectionist phenomenon? A quick catalog search through my brain quickly rendered two conclusions. Number one, many of the people who come to mind are women. And number two, the majority of these people fall in the they trigger me category, a phenomenon discussed ad nauseum in my other essay and YouTube video. To be clear, this doesn't mean men don't experience the provocative perfectionist phenomenon but are perhaps a bit buffered by some combination of our heightened acceptance of disagreeability in males, as well as men's roll-it-off-your-back response to criticism. That said, I could imagine men like Tim Ferriss or Adam Grant being provocative perfectionists. So, let's consider the provocative perfectionist phenomenon in one of today's most followed, yet despised celebrity figures, Gwyneth Paltrow. With her 400 white t-shirt recommendations and effortless dinnerscapes that would in fact require a small army, few celebrities seem more out of touch than Gwyneth. It's quite plain to see that she's a perfectionist. She is wildly achievement-oriented and apparently even oozes a geranium citrusy bergamot scent from her lady parts. Okay, Gwyneth, we get it. With her holier-than-thou perfectionism, it's easy to see that she cares about being seen as a success. But it's also obvious that she's more than a bit provocative. She's a disruptive entrepreneur who has built nothing short of a small empire on conventionally blush-worthy topics. Her site Goop features articles like Gwyneth on Orgasms Before Bed, products like a Goop-branded vibrator, techniques like sexological bodywork, kink practices that include wolverine claws, and a Netflix series, The Goop Lab, which covers everything from psychedelics to psychic mediumship. Interestingly, our seemingly instinctual distaste for Gwyneth and other provocative perfectionists, think Taylor Swift, may not be because they're so different from us, but instead because they embody a contradiction that we ourselves possess. The occasionally awkward, teenage-esque desire to break the mold while simultaneously fitting in. As I wrote in a prior article, we are triggered most by people who embody rejected parts of ourselves. So, what can us provocative perfectionists do to smash our cake and eat it too? 
How do we create criticism arousing work while simultaneously being sensitive to criticism that threatens our sense of achievement? As a choir member preaching to herself, I'm not entirely sure I have all the answers. But here are a few thoughts to get us started. Consider a career in which your personality is celebrated. Certain fields or positions may be better suited for your prickly perfectionism. For instance, provocative perfectionists might be particularly comfy in academic roles. The quest for intellectual success meets the desire to defend and criticize. Or entrepreneurship. The craving for scalable success meets the urge to disrupt and be self-led. If you're in a role in which your provocative perfectionist tendencies are not celebrated, perhaps a traditional corporate role or nonprofit setting, you may want to consider finding a new home in which your personality is seen as an asset. Next is define and respect your tolerance for tension. Some provocative perfectionists may have a higher tolerance for tension, meaning they can be provocative without being rendered impotent by the subsequent criticism and disapproval. Other provocative perfectionists may have a lower tolerance for tension, meaning every time they flex their provocative muscles, they are filled with a paralyzing fear of rejection. While we should all strive to grow outside our comfort zones, we should not actively move towards debilitating anxiety and self-doubt. All of this is to say, if you have a lower tolerance for tension, respect that. Don't fling yourself off a cliff just because you think you should. And finally, explore the source of your provocative tendencies. While we are all entitled to be provocative, that is, to speak our minds, define our own lifestyles, and create authentic work, some of our button-pushing tendencies may not represent an act of empowerment. Our desire to be a contrarian and a boundary pusher may not always be born from courageous conviction, but instead from insecurity and immaturity. Think the teenage desire to rebel. Accordingly, it's important for us provocative perfectionists to reflect on why we are compelled to create work that triggers, disquiets, or disrupts. Is it because this work is our destiny, or because we want attention? In the comments below, I would love to hear your thoughts on the provocative perfectionist phenomenon. How does it show up in your life? How do you reconcile the contradiction? How do you soften the blow of it? Let's crowdsource some solidarity around this phenomenon in a provocatively perfect way that only we can.